Hello everyone, I'm Andreas. Or <laughs> That's Abby. <laughs> I have come over it! <laughs> and that's Martin. If we can fuck it up even more. Screw you guys. <laughs> what? <Subscribe. laughs> or don't. <laughs> we watched Bloodfest. <laughs> Shut up. We watched uh, Bloodfest. Hey! What did you guys think about it? <laughs> I loved it. I liked it too. I, I liked it. Uh, it wasn't, you know, love, but uh, it was still a pretty good movie. So, would any of you care to... Yeah, yeah Andre, hey. you, for once, describe the plot. Blood. <laughs> Bloodfest is about a teenager who wants to go to a horror-themed night full of stars and activities, and it's a lot like a concert. But quickly, it turns out that they're gonna make a movie out of the uh, event. Out of the event with real killings. Now it's up to him, his understanding of the rules of horror movies, very traditional horror movies, but. What can you do? And uh, pure luck <laughs> to survive. It's also made by Rooster Teeth. Yes. Important up there. Is it really an important note though? Yeah, they're like the biggest of neat, neat nerd culture. <laughs> I have never heard of them. You're not a nerd. You're a book nerd. Anyways, let's talk about the movie. Uh, Andrew, you seem hey. to love it the most. So hey. I assume you remember the most because my memory is quickly leaking out. <laughs> Actually, maybe you should sit in the middle then. Okay. Fucking god. <laughs> Inconsistent. Andre, move your ass! <laughs> I wanna be in this review too. Are you angry that we didn't put you in the infested video? No. <laughs> I was glad I didn't have to watch anything made by Sony. Oh, you lucky bastard. Yeah. <laughs> so Bloodfest is a really good movie. There's no doubt, there's no doubt about that. This movie is basically like a satire of the horror movies a couple of times. In fact, the movie is sort of like... Oh, that's right. There's no... There's, the movie is just a massive tribute to classic horror movies, I think is a good way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, so there's a lot of references thrown around. A lot of them are really clever, actually. Ah! Who wants some horror? Usually I'm like, oh, that's another reference, oh, that's another reference, wow, make up something original. But here it's like, oh, it's more like an homage. Yeah, but I'm kind of really sad that there's no true, like, jump scares. Yes. <laughs> there is one. Don't you remember when they're in the cabin and suddenly a zombie? Blah. Blah. I guess. Yeah, this movie is just like chock full of references. Some subtle, some not so much. The saw room, that's an obvious amount to saw, even with the puppet. Although I was talking riddles, which was... Or I was talking rhyme, which was a bit confusing to me, but... Yeah, but that's a reference to Dr. Zeus. The truest horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> the cat in the hat. <laughs> the Have you seen Myers. that movie? I saw it recently. It's scarier than all the Saw movies. <laughs> yes. Fucking Michael Myers. And there's also like, the movie has its own fake in-universe slasher villain called The Arbiter. And they made six movies, so guess what he's referenced to? And it's like a killer who weeds out his victim. That's actually kind of clever. He was raised by trees. <laughs> That's also kind of clever. Why? We. I don't want to talk too much about just what's in the movie, though. Or Let's talk about what the movie means. The movie is basically saying all our horror movies and icons have become... Commodified? And tame. 
the fact the same thing happened with the Universal Monster movies, where they started out as like the scariest thing people ever seen, but now they put them on like lunch boxes and cartoon series. Which is kind of put in the front of the movie when the main character is watching White Zombie with his mother. And then the big uh, stage announcer guy, he probably had a name, he's basically saying, yeah, all our vampires are sparkly, all our zombies are now soap operas, our Cthulhu is in coloring books, we need to do something about that. Basically saying, like, our modern villains, that were Freddy Krueger and Jason and this in-universe Arbiter, are basically now children's icons and over-commercialized. So their goal for this event is to make horror great again. Yes. It, to put it in those words, because I do think it's a bit kind of shallow to view it like that. Every vampire, really? Has he read the American Vampire comics? Probably not. Those are really cool, actually. Check like, yes. those out. But he is focusing more on what we consider mainstream. Uh -huh. yeah. More wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, vampires were good, but then this thing Twilight happened, so let's insult that for a few minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When is this movie set? 2008? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's set in the modern day, which becomes kind of obvious with one of my smaller pet peeves, which is that they di directly reference Overwatch. Yeah. Which is a but bit bullshit. That's basically to tell you that's the geek character. Yeah. Uh, yes, because it wasn't obvious from the fact that they all wanted to go to a horror fest. <laughs> oh, no, no. He, he has to be computer nerd as well. And a hacker. No, I will say I do, didn't like that character. Played by the same guy who plays in the Spider-Man Homecoming We're movie. We're all gonna die. Which... <laughs> that's, that's really funny to me. I, I don't know why, but... Seeing someone from like a Spider-Man movie obsess about wanting to get getting laid is like that's fun to me. Kind of kills the inner child within me, and that makes me happy. You have the main kid. Yep. He, he's a bit too perfect for my taste. He's basically like every every horror fan who they're supposed to relate to. Like he has a bunch of posters in his room. And can't hang them properly. <laughs> Knows everything. Yeah, it's basically, you're not wasting your time watching all of these horror movies. <laughs> Look at what it did for him! Yeah. Now he's the cool one, it's kinda a less obnoxious player one, which... Yeah. <laughs> Ready player one, I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry about the movie too, and the book, and the author <laughs> being alive. <laughs> but you have the girl character. The girls. Yeah, the two girls. One is supposed to be like a straight horror fan, and the other one is like playing yes. the horror victim. And so you get like this uh, in-universe avatar, like, oh, I keep playing topless girl number four. Yeah, which I really appreciated, because there's a lot of horror movies that just, you know, oh, she's topless. Why? Because that gets us uh, people to watch the movies. And then we make money. Please watch, we have the boobies! Uh, there's also, like, the guy that played... What? Yeah, the Arbiter. The Arbiter? Yeah. He hates blood, which is an... You said it was an opposite to who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was, like, a reference to Wes Craven, because he made horror movies, and then he made a movie satirizing the horror genre. But no, he's more... Like an act, the actor. I was saying maybe... I can't say Robert England, but Robert England never hated playing Freddy Krueger, as far as I know. So, yeah, I would say like he's the opposite of Freddy Krueger. He keeps being typecast as this monster character, even though he wanted to do like serious movies, and he hates it because he keeps getting typecast as which, the character. Which is kind of funny because you can see that he's very thrilled about playing the ghost father of the Harbinger. It's Hamlet's father. So okay, like you get to see that, oh, he has a deeper passion for acting than just being typecast. So that was clever, something I appreciated. And that scene was also a very good nod to uh, the first Friday the 13th. No, the second Friday the 13th. But yes, uh, speaking of uh, cool details like that, anything else that really tickled your fancy? A reference to Plato's Cave. A really weird philosophical idea that I wasn't expecting in a horror movie. Uh, I don't remember it exactly, so... I, I do. Okay. Ha! <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I am. Yeah, don't. I am gonna say it. <laughs> they 
basically show a bunch of mental patients just one horror movie so they become that. Much like Plato's Cave when all you see are shadows on a wall with light behind you. And that kind of becomes your world. Yeah, another thing I liked... It has, like, a really clever reference to Cabin in the Woods. Oh yeah. Yeah, the control room. Yeah. The control power. And like all the people who was like twisted behind this are just normal people having a blast. There's Except also like the zombies are controlled by people thinking it's a game. <laughs> These graphics are way too real. <laughs> this one's kind of slow. <laughs> when are we gonna play the victims? Soon. I promise. I really appreciated a lot of the homage references. There, there were tons of them and they never really felt uh, out of place. They didn't really force it. Yeah, it was more like, uh, let us take inspiration from this thing and naturally fit, find a way to make the story a little bit more like that. Uh-huh. It's not like, oh, that's obviously a reference to that. I, I will say that multiple scenes feel like direct homages instead of, you know, just being, just taking directly from them. It doesn't really aim for more obscure horror films or films that are harder to define, for instance, they're not gonna fucking try to reference uh, the original Suspiria. <laughs> but yeah, there's also a, a bunch of cameos in this movie. Not just from people from Rooster Teeth, but it's also like the voice actor of Finn from Tangled. <laughs> I, what I really appreciated the most though about everyone who was there, who was slightly famous, was that they died almost instantly. <laughs> yeah, one thing we appreciated, realistic gore. Like, real blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not CGI. Yeah, just uh, real blood effects. Even if it was not real, well done, you tricked me. And, and I see a lot of gore yeah, in movies. Was, I think it was probably like a mix of CGI and blood, but the blood yeah. was done practical on set. And then they used the CGI to like mangle the corpses as they killed them. There's a scene in the movie where you can clearly see that there is CGI blood, but right after it's pra practical blood. Yeah, so they only use it when it's necessary. Oh yeah. Which is wonderful. That's how it should be. Their goal was basically to create a fun, homage, horror movie that references a lot. In which case, I think it succeeds. Yes. I will say, I will say that it succeeds. It's as an homage, but I maybe struggle to find it to be succeeding as its own kind of. Movie. Yeah, it's a, it's a movie like if you get the references, you'll enjoy it even more. But if you have never watched a horror movie or slash movie in your life, and you walk into this thinking this will be your first good experience, it'll probably confuse you a bit more, especially when characters talk about, like, the, the tropes. Yeah, and tropes and stuff like that. I, I also think it doesn't really say much other than the fact that a horror is... Uh, uh, that people take media and blame that for people being a little bit mentally not okay, you know, which is uh, a common thing said, which has been debunked multiple times by scientists. And beyond that, it doesn't really say all that much. It doesn't really point out the inherent sexism within horror where women will go bare-breasted. It's more like, oh yeah, women go bare-breasted in horror movies. So it's more of an homage than a commentary on the horror genre, and I think I would have liked to see more of a commentary. Yeah, but I think the aim was more for, com for comedy, so, you know, the former. Yeah, I, well, you can make fun of it. Well, you can make fun of most anything. You, you can make fun of it and still be tasteful. I should say. I'll say Cabin in the Woods does that a little better. Uh, so, it's a fun movie. I would recommend checking it out. Would I recommend checking it out again? Uh, I think once was enough for me. I think I, I'd want to watch it again just to properly get the uh, references. Same. Uh, so, who would you recommend this to beyond horror fans? <laughs> People who like romantic comedies. Just to fuck with them? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's fair, Martin, any idea? People who like rooster teeth. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea. Like, if you love horror movies, check this out. If you don't and you just want to look for an easy entrance into it, go for something else. Nightmare on Mastery. Chucky. Chucky. Yeah, Chucky. Oh, Chunky. 
What? What? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It, it, Nightmare on Chunk Street. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get into horror movies, watch the old movies by Peter Jackson. Splatter is seriously the best way to just prepare you for gore. Bad taste. Bad taste, brain dead or dead alive as it's called in America. Those two brought me into horror, so... Get into those if you want to get into horror, then you can experiment more, and then you can kind of watch this as kind of, oh yeah, I get it, this movie's made for me, and then move on. Or watch it again, because you want to get all the references, like some nerds here. So, I think subscribe, that, subscribe, <laughs> or don't. Maybe as a pizza ball.